As I mentioned in the previous video, the label object shares a lot of properties with the button object. In a way, you could visualize this as a text button. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a new label object by clicking on the A in the icon bar and selecting OK. Now we've got a label object on our canvas and we can take a look at the properties. In the properties pane here, we've got a name and text field, just like for the button object. So I'm going to put in the name field here, uh, email, and in the text area here, I'm going to type email us. But we're going to take a look at this additional option here. The button object didn't have this. You notice in the text area there's a little ellipsis button and if we click on that it brings up this edit text dialog. Here we can save our text as a text file, load text from a text file, print our text, or spell check our text. Additionally you can create multi-line labels by simply doing that in here. Okay, So we're going to go ahead and switch our text back for this object to say email us. Okay, so the next area here is the font area. This is the same as for the button object and any object that has a font option available for it you'll find that the options are identical. Okay, so let's go ahead and increase the size of our font slightly like that and we'll actually choose a new font. Let's cho choose Arial Black and we'll set it to be italic. Okay, and we're just doing this for fun but basically to demonstrate uh, how this is done. Additionally, you'll notice that the text is really nice and smooth now with the anti-aliasing that's been added. Okay, so let's jump right ahead. You'll notice that you have the same left, right, center alignment function as you did for the button. So that's to align your text within the caption or within the object. Um, additionally, we have this nifty little feature here that's not available for the button object and it is the orientation feature. So I'm going to move my label object into the center of the canvas here and from the pull down menu I'm going to select 90. This is going to apply a 90 degree rotation to our label object. This is really handy for certain stylish type of applications you might want to put little labels along the side of your page for example like this and uh, perhaps you have a photo over here on the other side and a little a little decorative bar here or something but basically there's a lot of applications where this is going to come in really really handy and this is a new feature of 5.0 so let's go and try a couple others out. As you can see, you can turn it 180, and that's a 180 degree rotation, or 270, that's a 270 degree rotation. So I'm going to go ahead and put that back at zero, and we'll go ahead and check out some of the other properties here. But I encourage you guys to fool around with that and, and see how it applies to your projects. Okay, we've got the same set of options for the state colors for the font here. So for example, if we set our highlight color to red and our click color to blue, when we preview our project, we press F5 to do that, you'll see that these colors are now present on our label. So you can treat it like a button object if you like. It's really nice, very handy to have that feature uh, built right into the properties pane here. Saves a lot of time. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and set these back to black here. Okay, so the next area we have here is the attributes area, and you'll notice that this is identical to the buttons button object pretty much where you've got the sounds, the cursor, the tooltip and so forth. So let's go ahead in the tooltip area and type email us and we will set our cursor to be a hand cursor which is our normal one. Again you won't be able to see my custom cursors during these video tutorials because of the video capture system that we use but uh, if you go ahead and fool around with it it'll quickly become evident to you what it does and how to use it and you can select from the wide range of uh, alternate cursors that we have ready for you here in this uh, drop down menu and additionally if you're an intrepid user you can create your own cursors and and add them to the product yourself okay we've got the sound areas here these work exactly like with a button object in this case when it applied it it didn't apply a default sound but we could have set it to uh, standard sounds or custom sound here and if we were setting it to custom sound we could uh, again click on this ellipsis and surf through and pick one of the sounds that we have on our hard drive or in our gallery and we're going to set that back to none and additionally we've got the same features here for the enabled and visible uh, function so for example if we set the enabled to false you'll see it switches to the disabled text color and if we were to preview it it wouldn't work anymore as a button and uh, we would have to enable it using an action. Okay, so that's same as a button object. So let's set that back to true. The visibility, exact same as a button object. You can set your, your object to be visible or invisible by default, just using this true or false pull down. 
Um, we've got the same features for the position and size as well as the button object here, right? So the same thing we did with the button object where we were able to adjust the position numerically here and we were also able to adjust the size of the object numerically here. Um, we can do here with the label object and as you can see it's a very handy feature that allows you to to really uh, exploit this object really quickly. For example if you had certain uh, objects that were along a certain line you could quickly align it to that line simply by typing in that into the x-axis here or the left field and additionally if we wanted to match the size for example um, really quickly from this object to one other object and we knew the other object was for example say 100 pixels wide we could just type it in here and boom we're ready to go okay so we're going to there we go oh yeah that's worth mentioning too if you if you're um, constraining your your keeping your aspect ratio here with your text what's going to happen is that it's going to snap your your uh, width and height to the available text size so so for example if i type in a width of 100 that width is not available because actually to keep the aspect ratio it had to adjust that to 98 so that's worth bearing in mind you might have to go by eye sometimes simply by dragging the corner or you might have to disengage that feature the keep aspect feature but I like to keep that on for my label objects okay so let's go on to the actions area this acts the same way as it does for a button object in other words we can attach actions to this label for the on click state the on enter state and the on leave state and those are the mouse states um, the very same as the button object so for example on click is when the user clicks this object on enter is when they roll their mouse onto it and on leave is when they roll their mouse out of it okay so those are the label properties and actually we're going to go ahead and take a quick look at the properties dialog before we go here and you'll notice that much like the button object it has the couple additional features in the properties dialog that you don't get in the properties pane for example matching the normal color here and uh, so for example if we had some different colors here and we wanted to quickly match these to the normal color we could just click that button it's very very handy and in addition we've got the, the spell checker and in the attributes area the spell checker for the tooltip so those are some of the differences between the properties pane and the properties dialog for this object and that's pretty well it for the label object properties so we'll go ahead and move on now to the label object actions